T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And we're done. Vehicle is pitching down range. Stage one chamber pressure on. At T plus 30 seconds, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Slick 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Coming up next, the vehicle will be passing through max Q, which is the point in the mission profile where the vehicle will experience the greatest amount of aerodynamic pressure as it ascends. Power and telemetry nominal. Good call out there. We should hear that call out for max Q in about 15 seconds from now. Vehicle is supersonic. Max Q. And there's that call out for Max Q. Coming up next, we'll have three events happening in quick succession, starting with Miko, followed by Stage Step, and then SES 1. Main engine cutoff, or Miko, is where all nine Merlin 1D engines shut down to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation, which is where the first stage separates from the second stage. Followed by this, the MVAC engine on the second stage will light, which is called out as second engine start one. Started. Second engine start one, or SES 1. This engine burn, lasting several minutes, will propel the second stage and the payload to orbit. And in addition to these three major events, the fairing halves will separate less than a minute after SES-1. So keep an eye out for all of these events happening in about 30 seconds from now. And as a reminder, we will not have any views of stage 2 or the payload at the request of our customer. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. And there you heard those callouts back to back, which again were Miko, stage separation, and SES 1. Coming up shortly, we should hear a call out for fairing separation, but as a reminder, we will not be showing it on screen. Both payload fairing halves supporting tonight's mission are flight proven, with one half flying for its 13th time and the other flying for its 7th time. Fairing separation confirmed. And there's that confirmation of fairing separation. We'll be attempting to retrieve both of these fairing halves again today once they fall back to Earth with our recovery vessel Go Beyond currently stationed in the Pacific Ocean. We're currently at T plus 3 minutes and 36 seconds into today's mission. Now the next major milestone coming up in a few minutes from now will be the entry burn of the Falcon 9 booster as it, con as it continues on its journey towards the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship currently stationed in the Pacific Ocean. Now to start the entry burn, we'll relight three of the M1D engines, which is similar to pumping the brakes to slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow the vehicle down to reduce re-entry forces, which will then help us recover and reuse the first stage. Now, during the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but it's still moving really fast. And this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume, which deposits a layer of soot onto the vehicle surface. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle.
Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical space infrastructure, and in today's case, for national security. The Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission is flying for its eighth time today. This booster previously supported NASA Crew-7, CRS-29, PACE, Transporter-10, Earth Care, and two Starlink missions. We should be hearing the callout for the entry burn of the Falcon 9 booster in about 30 seconds from now. Now the Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. At liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has the thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. Now the MVAC engine on the second stage, which is not shown, uh, has a much wider nozzle, and it's optimized to 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Stage one, entry burn startup. And there's that call out for the entry burn on the Falcon 9 first stage. This will last about 20 seconds. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And there you heard that call out for entry burn shutdown on the Falcon 9 first stage. Vehicles are on nominal trajectories. And good call out there. Now, as the vehicle descends through the Earth's atmosphere, be sure to watch that stage, stage one. one has saved. Be sure to watch the stage one telemetry on the bottom left hand corner of your screen, which will show the vehicle rapidly decelerating as it descends back to Earth. Coming up in about 30 seconds from now, we'll have uh, the landing burn on the Falcon 9 first stage. And the landing burn is the final burn of the Falcon 9 booster used to reduce the remaining speed of the vehicle in order, to allow, one, transonic. In order to allow for a soft touchdown on the, FTSS safe. on the drone ship. We should be hearing that call out for the landing burn startup in just a few moments from now. Stage one landing burn. And there you heard and saw startup of the landing burn on the Falcon 9 first stage. As a reminder, stage two terminal guidance. As a reminder, this booster is set to land on the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship currently stationed in the Pacific Ocean. Landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you heard and saw a successful callout of the Falcon 9 booster landing on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. This was the eighth launch and landing for this first stage. This landing marks SpaceX's 326th recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Today's mission marks SpaceX's 362nd overall mission to date and the 67th mission of this year. Now, as a reminder, we will not be showing any stage two or deployment views at the request of our customer. So with that landing of the Falcon 9 booster, we'll be bringing today's webcast to a close. 